I'd like to start our school board meeting on Tuesday, June 11th, 2002, um, with everyone to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Um, our first item on the agenda is for um, adjustments to last month's agenda. Are there any adjustments from any of the school board members? Everything's okay with minutes? Okay. Um, then uh, I think we can hear from our two high school students, uh, David and Chris. Actually, it's nice to see you. Um, I was thinking after graduation, I wasn't afraid that you might be out of here. <laughs> that, that's right, you're not high school students anymore. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's okay. It's kind of, we're you know, kind of waiting for it to set in, too. Uh, but uh, it's been a very, actually, uh, busy week at the high school, believe it or not, even for seniors. <laughs> uh, we had our uh, senior banquet where. Uh, we were presented uh, scholarships and awards, and then the slideshow, which I think Chris helped put together, it was uh, pretty funny with a bunch of baby pictures, you know, pictures of the kids when they when they were young, all the way up to you know when they're high school or middle school. So that was a lot of fun. Plus on Tuesday, was there was the awards assembly for um, like the English awards or Bartleby or things like that. So a lot of the seniors were recognized for their um, participation and their achievement in. Uh, academics and extracurricular activities. Um, also, just uh, regarding the uh, senior celebration um, banquet thing, um, I would like to express the gratitude of the senior class to the community uh, for all the money that um, it gave to us uh, for furthering our education. Um, I believe at the beginning they said something towards the sum of uh, $50,000 was actually dispersed, uh, which is a significant sum, obviously, and definitely helps out with the rising uh, cost of college. So I'd like to express on behalf of the senior class that appreciation. Uh, and um, outside of the award ceremony, um, we had graduation, obviously, and project graduation. Uh, we'd like to thank, on behalf of the senior class, again, everybody who helped out with that. Uh, it was a tremendous time. <clears throat> I think everybody enjoyed the ceremony. Um, and the speakers were tremendous also. We'd like to thank them. The organizers uh, also uh, deserve a round of applause. Um, and uh, uh, as for the, uh, the project graduation, we'd like to thank the parents of the high school of the uh, class of 2002 and uh, all the organizers and uh, people who contributed to uh, that evening, which was spectacular. Um, the, it was, we had a great time. It started off at, I believe, 7.30 in the uh, high school bus parking lot, or the lower parking lot. And from there, we went to the Comedy Connection, where we listened to three stand-up acts, which were uh, very humorous um, for us young adults. Um, <laughs> after that, we went to the... Uh, Portland Athletic Club in Falmouth, and uh, that's where I developed my gambling problem. Um, they, <laughs> they had a bunch of different things set up. There was um, like a mini casino with uh, like uh, dealers and stuff with you know blackjack and things like that. That's where I spent most of my time. Uh, there were also uh, there's also uh, ping pong, pool, a hypnotist, a masseuse, um, a fortune teller, um, movies, all kinds of stuff. So. Yeah, a lot of food, a lot of food. Um, and that's what we did for, I think, five hours. You know, when you, you, you would do something until you got sick of it, then you'd move on to the next thing. And so by the time six hours uh, was up, like everyone was basically just signing yearbooks. And so it was a perfect amount of time for everyone to have a good time and then just start, you know, coming together and talking. Uh, from there, we went to, uh, uh, one of the students has a uh, private beach. And when we got there, there's a bonfire and breakfast. Um, and we watched the sun come up. Some of the students um, ran into the water around uh, 4.30 in the morning, um, <laughs> almost naked. And uh, that's how we finished off uh, <laughs> our, high, our high school education. <laughs> uh, uh, there, there's a number of, stuff, uh, of things going on that don't involve seniors, believe it or not. Uh, the finals are, uh, are occurring at the high school currently, which uh, thankfully we're, uh, we don't have to take. Uh, and uh, those are progressing nicely from what I understand. I mean, I'm not, <laughs> not in, I'm not going to the school or anything like that, but 
I, I don't have any problems. So, uh, so the finals are going on. Uh, the school year will be done by Friday, uh, is, which is the makeup day for all people who miss exams. Um, and I think the body of Cape Elizabeth High School is looking forward to a long and fun summer. Uh, I guess on behalf of uh, Dave and myself, I'd like to thank you. Uh, we've had, this is, I guess, our last uh, presentation, last of 10 presentations to you guys, uh, to this body. Uh, so we'd like to thank you for having us. Um, and uh, just to remind you that next year's uh, representatives are Hillary Wymont and Aaron McKenney. So you can look forward to them. They'll do a fine job, I'm sure. I'd like to thank you as well. Um, we've had a great time coming up here every month, and talking to you guys, telling you what's going on. Um, I just hope next year is a little easier for the senior class because this year was a little, uh, you know, a little difficult for us getting started. But it's, I'm hoping that next year will be better. Well, thank you very much. Uh, we enjoyed this opportunity. Thank you. Any questions? Is there um, on, on behalf of the whole school board, um, you guys did a terrific job this year, um, and we really enjoyed having you here. But before you leave, David, I have one. You have to pass one test. And it's only one question, and this is before you can be out of Cape Elizabeth High School. Do you know what the question is? I know what the answer is. <laughs> <laughs> is, is Chris on your right or your left? He's on my right. Okay. <laughs> That's it. That was actually a uh, planned part of the speech. <laughs> it was great. Actually, it was great. We knew that. We knew that. Do, do any other board members have any comments? Or? I was just wondering if, um, if the two of you could kind of share with us your plans for next year. Um, I'm going to Norwich University in uh, Vermont, the Military College of Vermont, on a four-year ROTC, Marine Corps ROTC scholarship, and from there it's into the Marine Corps. Um, I start uh, the seven-year combined uh, BAMD program at George Washington University in Washington, D.C. That's terrific. Anyone else? Okay. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, and now Brianna and Lily from the middle school. Hello. Um, this month, everything is pretty much wrapping up in the middle school. Uh, spring sports, uh, track, softball, baseball, and lacrosse are all coming to a close, unfortunately. And despite the fact that it is the end of the year, we're still working hard to finish the needed things in the time we have left. Some of the things are beach day, which is coming up on Thursday, and the fifth grade is going to Crescent Beach, the sixth and seventh are going to Scarborough, and the eighth grade is going to Old Orchard Beach. Hopefully the weather permits. And, um, and this is a great incentive to push really hard in the last week of school and turn in missing work and pay off your lunch tabs if you haven't. <laughs> mm. Also, uh, some end of the year activities just ended. Uh, the eighth grade went to help out the land trust in man maintaining trails throughout Cape Elizabeth. And the last seventh and eighth grade dance was just held, as well as the fifth and sixth grade social. Um, Wednesday, the 12th, which is tomorrow, the whole school is having step-up day when the 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th graders are excited to meet their new teachers as are the teachers to meet them. Um, also, tomorrow night is 8th grade recognition put on by the Middle School Parent Association and other parents. And on behalf of my 8th grade peers and I, we would like to recognize the MSPA and our parents for all their help. And thank you very much. Also, the annual Augusta trip was held last week, and our entire eighth grade went to the State House Maine State Museum and finished with a nice <coughs> lunch in the park. We also thoroughly enjoyed that and learned a lot about our state of Maine. As you all know, school ends on Friday, and all the students are very excited to experience summer, but are also sad that a great year is coming to an end. Brianna and I would like to thank the school board for making our experience as representatives a great one, and we hope to see you in the upcoming years. Okay, yeah. thank you. And both of you have been terrific this year, too. We've really enjoyed having you both. Thank you. Thank you. Any Any comments? Questions? All right, no? thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Um, our next item on the agenda under communications. 
um, we will move reflections of the year by the school board members to the end of the meeting rather than keeping it under communications. And uh, we held an organizational meeting before this meeting, and George will report on what we did. I'm just going to report on um, the major subcommittees of the board. Um, first off, um, elected uh, as chair for this year uh, for the school board is Marie Prager. And then uh, chair for the finance subcommittee um, is Elaine. And uh, serving with her on the finance subcommittee uh, will be uh, Kevin. Sweeney and me. Um, on the policy subcommittee, uh, elected chair is uh, Susan Steinman. And on that committee will uh, be Jennifer, Jennifer DeSena and, uh, and Kathy. Um, uh, on the planning committee um, uh, chair, I, I will serve as chair of the planning committee. And joining me on that uh, subcommittee is Elaine and Kathy. Thank you. Um, and now, comments from the public. Do we have any? No? OK, then we will move on to recognition. Um, the first thing on our list is um, our annual recognition of staff for um, years of service. And each, each year at this time, um, we do read the um, list of staff members who have attained 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, and 35 years of service. Those individuals will be recognized um, in August as we start the year. Um, but it is customary to read the list uh, at, this, at this public setting. Um, and I will read the first list of people who have attained five years of service in the district. Uh, Richard Alexander, Michael Amelot, Nancy Angier, Paulina Portria, Carly Bean, Robin Carr, Stanley Doty, Aaron Filio, Kath, Kathy Hamlin, Suzanne Hamilton, Kathy Jakes, Peggy Johns, Ted Jordan, Susan Michaud, Roger Rio, Catherine Robinson, Charles Thompson, Chris Turner, Ann Bernard, Gay Howe, and Carolyn Wisley. Following individuals have reached 10 years of service in the district. Bev Bisbee, Ellen Brady, Deb Casey, Marilyn Dale, Katie Lisa, Scott Shea. Fifteen years of service, Ray Cooper, Joan Enman, Tracy Greenwood, Sally O'Malley, Claire Ramsbotham, David Shields, Belinda Snell, Ren Wilkinson. Twenty years of service, Nancy Rollis, John Casey, Sharon Merrill, and Tom Wilbur. 25 years of service, Judy Gray and Susie Safer. 30 years, Mary Beth Benoit and Judy Ferranti. And for 35 years of service, Mary Bruns and Keith Weatherby. And the golden cane will be passed on to those two individuals at a later date. It's nice to see, you know, so many um, long-term employees. This is terrific. Um, God, all of those at 10, 15, 20, and 35 years. That's wonderful. Um, our next item on our agenda is for our retiring um, faculty and staff. And what we, we would like to do is, uh, Marie and I will move to the podium. We do have um, um, a presentation of um, small token appreciation on, on behalf of the school board for um, staff members that are retiring um, from service. And then our hope is when we uh, complete that presentation, we have some punch and cookies and coffee if we haven't eaten them all yet. Um, and we'll take a 15-minute recess at the conclusion just um, um, to have uh, an opportunity for the school board to chat with the retiring uh, members of the faculty. We also at this time also each year uh, take a moment to recognize any school board members um, that will that have um, that will be leaving the board or have left the board and we always include that as part of this this process also so
boy, did it take me a long time to wrap all these. <laughs> right, right, Mary? <laughs> I watched you do it every minute. <laughs> Especially the bows. That's right. <laughs> He's really getting good at making those bows. <laughs> and these are, uh, in, in, I, through the Teacher Association and other groups, I know there has, has been some, some recognition, but this is just a small token on behalf of the board. Um, and all I'm simply going to do is, is just ask the individual to come up um, and please accept this with uh, our appreciation for, for what you have offered the district um, and the services you have given us over the years. And the first one is a person who's been employed by the district for 20 years at Pond Cove, and that's Nancy Rollins. Thirty-two years. Um, I don't know if it's all been at, at the middle school, but thirty-two years of service, Gail Parker. Seven years of service um, in physical education, Neen Burgess. service at Pond Cove in the guidance area, Sarah Berman. And uh, finishing uh, one term on the school board and um, I, just as a, as a superintendent, I would like to, to, to personally thank Jim, and I know the rest of the board feels the same way for his time that he's given to the town of Cape Elizabeth and the school board, and that's Jim Rowe. Um, 34 years of service um, at the middle school and I think sometime at uh, elementary school, that is Bruce Lynn. And um, I would like to call on Jim Rowe, who I think would like to say a couple of words as a retiring school board member. Thank you all. And as soon as Jim is finished, we'll have some punch and cookies. Thank you, Tom. Uh, I feel tremendously privileged to have been a member of the Cape Elizabeth School Board. Um, former President Richard Nixon was a great student of human nature, and I find one of his observations to be uh, particularly relevant tonight. Uh, it goes something like this, and I quote, uh, a man who has never lost himself in something bigger than himself has missed one of life's mountaintop experiences. For only in losing himself does he find himself." End quote. Uh, my service on the school board has been a mountaintop experience in my life, and uh, there's no doubt that the enormity of this thing we call public education is much bigger than Jim Rowe. And there's also little doubt that there have been a few times in the past three years that I felt incredibly lost and insignificant in facing that enormity. Uh, but as Nixon suggests, it's at these times when I felt most inadequate that I have actually learned the most. Learned the most not of, only about how we teach and learn here in Cape Elizabeth, uh, not only how to better appreciate those of you who have dedicated yourselves to bringing our kids to the, to the doorstep of adulthood, but I've, more than anything else, I've learned an awful lot about myself and what I stand for as a person, and I'll always be grateful for that. Uh, I want to thank my colleagues on the school board for their patience and understanding. Uh, 
I want you to know that I consider you all, and you too, Kathy, uh, to be very close personal friends, and I hope the feeling's mutual. Uh, I want to thank the administrators and the uh, teachers, teachers and the support people in our district for the, uh, the, the confidence that they've extended me in the, in, over the past three years. And uh, to Mary Bruns, my surrogate mom on the school board, I want to thank you uh, not only for the terrific job you do, Mary, but I, uh, for serving as a singular example of personal strength over the last couple months. You've been an inspiration to me and I think to all of us. Thank you. And uh, Tom, uh, I knew I liked you the first time I met you outside that closed door executive session three years ago. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad that we've become friends and uh, I'm looking forward to being able to drop into your office and just talk basketball. Uh, no student issues, no budgets, no policies, just basketball. But uh, more than anything else, I want to thank the voters of Cape Elizabeth um, for, if not their belief in me, at least their willingness to give me a, a, a chance at the school board. Uh, I can tell you when I step off tonight that I've stayed true to the principles that I told you I believed in three years ago. Um, I've acted accordingly, and hopefully you found those actions to be in the best interest of Cape Elizabeth and its schools. Thank you very much. Yes, thanks, Jim, and we'll take a 15-minute recess. We will reverse school board meeting um, with number eight on our agenda, which is the superintendent's report. If you remember at, um, I think it was our last meeting uh, when we talked about um, a new planned job share, um, it has always been our intent to give them feedback from a recent job share. So um, we have some individuals here, I think this evening, to share some information with you about a job share that's been going on in the middle school. Gail Parker and Allison Hawks. Um, it's been a fantastic year for both of us. Um, there were initial concerns by the parents about the fact that the kids would not be switching rooms. We were a little bit worried about that, but I think that after probably the first month of school, there was no more um, talk about that. They were pretty quickly, um, their fears were alleviated. And uh, in fact, most of the parents really said that they liked the fact that there was a little bit of a, a bridge between the elementary school and the middle school in that, in that uh, area. Um, uh, there was um, a lot of feedback from parents in terms of communication between the two of us. We started out really aligning um, what we were doing and then also uh, within that we realized that we both had two different teaching styles which was great for the kids as well so they were getting the two similar to what all the other fifth graders were getting. Uh, our students were getting two. The new, new teacher would come in halfway during the day and, and who had new, different expectations and, and different teaching styles um, so that was nice. Um, but the parents also really appreciated the fact that we were constantly communicating and, um, and uh, really uh, also appreciated the fact that both of us were there at the conferences, which was really nice. It was great to hear Gail's point of view about the, the student and uh, for her to hear mine. Um, I just have a quote from one of the students, um, Michael Long, that the parents gave feedback and we also asked for the kids, the students' feedback as well. The job share is a great idea and I wish it was used in the entire school instead of one classroom. It is more convenient for students and doesn't take up class time. It also corresponds with the teacher's schedule, both of which are wonderful. I think he means that the, the teacher's not the teacher's schedules. But um, so the kid got really a huge, tremendous response from the parents uh, in terms of they really, really enjoyed it and thought that it worked um, really well for them and the students and for us. 
there were a couple of things that I think are particularly uh, valuable in a job share. I think in any job share, one of the most exciting parts is that it allows students and teachers to have someone who is coming in fresh and excited at the midpoint of the day, as students might perhaps on occasion be dragging towards the middle of the day or hitting that one o'clock wall. Um, they don't get that nearly as much because the teacher who's come in is coming in fresh in the middle of the day and excited and ready and raring to go. And you end up on the half days when you leave, you're not tired yet. You're not worn out. Your feet don't even hurt. And I think that that gives a dimension to teaching and allows an energy level to be brought to the classroom that just isn't realistic to expect when someone is teaching all day long in a classroom. You have a change of students in the middle of the day, but and that helps a little in terms of invigorating you, but I think it's an outstanding piece to job sharing. Our particular job share was designed not with a straight across the board cut at the middle of the day, but with one teacher having all day Monday and then mornings Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, the other teacher having afternoons Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and all day Friday, which is kind of an unusual split. I think that that gave some other benefits by allowing an in-depth time when you could really immerse the students in two subject areas. It gave flexibility for field trips and for extended projects and to really dig in and around a subject which might not be feasible with a 45 minute period. It gave us some of the flexibilities that used to be part of a self-contained classroom while allowing the students to still experience, again, the, as Allison said, the different teaching styles of two different teachers and getting used to the, the process of moving from teacher to teacher. Do you have any questions? Um, we appreciate you coming tonight to talk to us because we had discussed this a, a few meetings ago and it really helps us to hear directly from you and, and how it went um, through the year. Does anyone have any questions? I'm, what are the plans for next year? The plans for next year are that the job share is going to continue. I don't know exactly um, what the schedule is going to be. Allison will be job sharing next year with Jill Bell, who is a, presently a full-time fifth grade teacher in the middle school. Um, I think that one of the things that is difficult about the job share as you look towards the future is that taking on a job share is something which is kind of limited to people who are either at the beginning of the career, their career or heading towards a long time part of their career because of the jeopardy that you are in by giving up your seniority. That's a, I understand that there are a lot of ramifications to seniority and so forth, but it's, it's a huge risk to put yourself at and I would hope that sometime when you explore other options for job sharing and other configurations of staffing, that if you want that to be truly available to, to your staff throughout the, the range of staff, we have to kind of find a way of doing that that doesn't carry some of those price tags. Every opportunity has a cost, but it's nice if you can get them with lower costs and higher opportunity. That's good, That's good to know. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? No? Okay. I had uh, one other thing I'd like to say, if, if I may sure. be indulged. Um, it kind of connects to that. I accepted the job share knowing it was a year-to-year -year position, and I think that is a, certainly a piece of the job share. And I made a very difficult decision to retire to protect my family from what was clearly a tight budget struggle, which had put the job share position at risk. I said I would actively candidate to be rehired if the position survived the budget process. I am not embarrassed to say that I am deeply disappointed that after my application I was not hired to continue the job share next year. However, I would like to say that Jill Bell is a colleague with whom I teamed myself for a year, three years ago, and I know from firsthand experience that she is a truly excellent teacher and will do an outstanding job next year. One of my favorite quotes is from Dickens' A Christmas Carol, whose ghost of Christmas past says, there is never enough time to do or say all the things we would wish. The thing is to try to do as much as you can with the time that you have. 
i wanted more time as a teacher here that's true and i was hoping to have it but as the ghost of christmas past learned there is never enough time and perhaps there never would be enough time i approached each day of my thirty two years here proud to be a cape elizabeth middle school teacher and i approached it with joy in the process of teaching and eagerness to lead my students to become more and more excited about learning each day. I retire knowing that I am proud of the years that I spent in Cape Elizabeth and was proud to be a Cape Elizabeth teacher and knowing that I did the best that I had with the, the best that I could with the time that I had and I thank you for that time. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next. The next item on superintendent's report, um, you do have notification of um, <coughs> retirements and resignation. One is a letter from, from Gail. Um, another is from Ken Plummer, who um, was unable to be here um, this evening, but Ken is in, along with um, uh, Norm Richardson. Both of those individuals are retiring, but were not able to be here uh, this evening. Um, you also have a letter of resignation from and Bernard at the high school. And lastly, um, these are MEA results are hot off the press. Um, I just received them um, just as we were putting the, the packets together and at the same time I was putting the results into your packet, they were going out to the principals and I'm sure at this busy time of year, although they are probably looked very quickly at the results, I don't think there's been much time to review um, the information, but I did want to make make sure that you did receive the results, and this is um, something that we can probably have further discussion on um, the first of uh, the first of next year. Um, then we can move on to the principals' reports. Um, we'll start with the high school, Jeff. First, I want to apologize for appearing in sneakers before the school board, but with Kathy and a bunch of other fans, I was at the lacrosse game this afternoon, and it was a little bit wet, and my closet is not filled with lots of backup shoes. So the lacrosse game was absolutely fantastic, well worth getting soaked. Um, the team won 11-7 11, 11 against a very, very tough Kenny Bart team. They played very, very well, so it was a great game. Um, I didn't anticipate that David and uh, David and Chris were going to be here for this last school board meeting, and they managed to cover um, about 90% of what I was going to say, so I'll keep things relatively short. Um, one of them I just said, which is lacrosse victory. Um, we've also been doing a lot of interviewing at the high school. Uh, it's been taking a lot of time by the administrators and by teachers as well. Uh, we started off this interviewing season, hiring season, with I think eight positions to fill, and at this point we've brought all but five, all but all but two, to the level of, of getting somebody in Tom's office, uh, and then ultimately before the school board as the next step. So we're making good progress, and I expect <coughs> I expect we'll have the next couple within the next couple of days, um, at least again to the level to Tom's level. Um, David and Chris didn't mention, and I wanted to, the senior transition project. It was my first year going through and watching that process. Um, our seniors completed three weeks of the project just uh, it was a week and a half ago, maybe not quite that long, something like that. Um, and some members had an opportunity to go to the, um, to the final presentation uh, that, a lot of our, that a number of our students did. And I personally, um, although I'd known the titles of some of the things that those students had presented, it was quite an eye-opening experience to, to see the diversity of what they had done. Um, students did everything. Um, from uh, working at a therapeutic horse, um, therapeutic horse riding uh, stable, an out-of-state law firm. A couple students who did present that evening uh, created a puppet show, which they then put on for some elementary students. Quite a few students did some trails work, both um, on the mainland and a few um, on islands in Casco Bay. It was exciting. A um, few students worked in a hospital. Um, a couple students actually worked with Jeff Inglis at the Cape Current as reporters. Uh, there was one student who did a very in-depth study of uh, comics and refining his own comic art form, working with a professional comic. 
we had at least two students working on their own uh, musical compositions, um, both of which got incredibly high marks from Norm Richardson, um, who's known for his high standards, said that the work that they did was absolutely outstanding. Um, uh, we had a student work at the Maine State Aquarium. We had two students teaching elementary school in France. Um, we had one student teaching a, uh, doing a variety of uh, studies on art things, and she was one of the presented, and she spent some time studying the art form of tattooing um, a week, teaching art to elementary school te uh, students, and then uh, a week at an art gallery, I guess it was. We had five students helping out Mr. Mullen on The King and I, um, and doing a, getting some very much more different and in-depth experiences in various aspects of putting that production to together that they uh, had not done before. In their past, they had been actors or set design or working on sets or things like that, but having that leadership experience. Andy Stroud hosted one or two of our students, two of our students uh, at the middle school. Uh, we had one student at Community Services working with Sue Weatherby, and it goes on and on and on and on and on. And next year, we anticipate doing another public presentation, uh, the work that the students do. Uh, we had a debriefing meeting this afternoon to look at what went well, what needs to be improved uh, as part of this sort of ongoing discussion about, about the senior transition project. So that was, that was exciting. And that evening particularly was really exciting because it was one that I particularly needed after all the details of working on graduation and interviewing and everything else. It was great to be able to sit back and enjoy what the students had done and hear from them. That's all I have. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Any questions? <coughs> okay. Um, Nancy? Good evening. Um, following our tradition that we've used the last couple of years in celebrating some things, I'd um, just like to take a moment and reflect back on our year um, with you. First of all, we want to celebrate our continued great partnership with the parents in our middle school. Oftentimes, middle school students will explain to their parents they don't really want you at school, um, but our parents are resilient and persevere and understand that's really perhaps not the whole truth and that we really do enjoy our partnership with them. Um, from the people who have come every month to the middle school parents association meetings to those wonderful parents who once a month provide food for the teachers. Um, and we are just sort of like seagulls at the dump when that food shows up. We just all gather there. The food's much better than if you um, were eating at a um, dump or anything like that. But um, that certain analogy didn't work very well. <laughs> um, well, moving on. It was because I was just so floored that Jeff had sneakers on. I didn't know what to do. Um, anyway. <laughs> I'll see if I can do better as we go on. <laughs> but also our continued work with Gail Schmader um, and bringing other parents into our school through the career awareness and having a chance to share the things that they're passionate about with our students. It was wonderful to host um, some of our own high school students back as they did their senior projects for our eighth grade students to go out on their outdoor experience and work with other um, Cape Elizabeth High School seniors on the Trails Project. Um, it was also great to continue a long-standing partnership that we've had with Chevrolet High School in hosting two of their seniors, um, both Cape Elizabeth residents, Will Yeomans and John Miley, and having them do their month-long internship with us. Um, it was nice to see those young men, to have them come back, and they were really proud to come back and give something back to their community. We also, it was a great year um, to further that partnership with parents. Um, several of them served on committees with us as we did things such as review our accelerated language arts program and also sharing um, wonderful ideas with us and new ways to do things. And as I've shared with this group before, um, the wonderfulness of Ann Belden and her group bringing the wonder years to us and the wonderfulness of Dr. Hector Terraza bringing to us a different way to provide coverage for Steve Price during the intense times of the play production. Um, those are two examples of as we try to go a little bit deeper into what do parent partnerships mean for middle school. And we hope to continue those and invite more wonderful idea sharing as we go on. It's been a great year to celebrate with our students as we've watched them perform not only every day, but also in their musical concerts and have great energy and fun. Our bands and choruses are absolutely exploding. And we have that interesting problem of we hardly even fit in the high school gym anymore. Our performing groups and our audiences are so large. 
uh, watching our students take a risk in the variety show and share with us some of their talents that they have practiced for a number of years or talents they have recently discovered, but they have the confidence to get up and share them with one another. And that's a wonderful thing to watch. Each year, a benchmark for us is our play, and we like to have students come and be excited about it. And last night, when we were doing our orientation with our incoming fifth graders, several of them mentioned to me they already were excited about the play, and they couldn't wait to figure out what we were going to do this coming year when they'll be in the middle school. Our students have continued to do well academically as well, too, and one of the ways that we know that that separate from the things we do every day and um, standardized tests are their, perform their outstanding performance on national French and Spanish exams. And once again, they did very well on those. On May 23rd, Mary Murphy, the eighth grade team leader, and I were able to accompany two of our eighth grade students and their families to the scholar leader dinner sponsored by the Maine Association of Middle Level Educators and the New England League of Middle Schools when we recognized Dana Riker and Chris Miller as scholar leaders in our eighth grade. Once again, just very strong students in many, many areas and just sort of personifying that essence of leadership throughout. And that was a great evening to spend with them. Right at the beginning of this current school year, our students faced the challenge, as did our whole nation, of how would we respond to September 11th. And in true middle school fashion, they really looked to go beyond themselves. And from our fifth grade, several fifth grade classrooms who instantly began a partnership and a relationship with um, police departments and fire departments in New York City, personal letters to Mary Ju Mayor Giuliano. At the time, all of those things were really important to them. They got information back from them in a celebration. Um, our student council deciding to um, donate some money and, and buy the paintings for different places in town and sharing that. And then also growing from that, our whole program of adopt a service program, which our students um, have really liked. And these are our former students and residents and other residents of town who are serving in our military service. Just today, one of our groups, um, Sally Conley's homeroom, their service person, Matt Jansen, came to visit them. And it was wonderful. Um, a rock celebrity would not have been as honored as he was. They were so excited. And it was great that, um, although in basic training he hadn't had time to write back to them all the time, he kept all of their letters, he knew them, and he spent time with that. And that human relationship, once again, beyond themselves, was a wonderful thing to watch. We're excited about next year as our colleague Suzanne Janelle heads off to Japan for three weeks. She's already been around school building her uh, pictorial portfolio of all of us, so she'll have things to share um, with the school in Japan, and we know she'll have that um, digital camera out again next fall to make sure that she has everything ready. I think Suzanne may need a private plane to take the things over to Japan, um, but she'll get some good pointers from Tom because he goes a little bit earlier than she does as to what she should bring and um, be sure she has all of that to share. And finally, it's been a, a year, a sad moment for us, but also a moment of celebration as we say goodbye to four of our colleagues who have been part of defining the Cape Elizabeth Middle School for probably collectively well over 100 years, if we put all of their years together. Um, you've honored them here tonight. Anine, Burgess, Bruce Lynn, Gail Parker, and Ken Plummer. Um, we will miss them. We know that for each one of them, next fall as those buses take off, it'll feel just a little bit different. Um, but we also celebrate with them and appreciate the many years of service they have spent with us and have given to us over the years. So it's been a great year. We look forward, as Lily and Brianna said, we're ready for summer. But then again, we'll be ready for August as well. Thanks, Nancy. Um, any comments or questions for Nancy? No? Okay, Tom? Good evening. <clears throat> I remember standing here last year and, and confessing I didn't really want the year to end because of all the initiatives going on upon COVE with literacy and assessment, curriculum and climate. But I'm pleased to report that the momentum from last year carried over to this year. Um, let's begin on the academic front. As an offshoot of our literacy investigation, a K-4 group got together over the summer to develop an assessment, a rubric in writing for, for use by the whole school. They shared that with the faculty in the fall, and the teachers agreed to field test it in time for fall conferences. Um, 
suggested some revisions and is now a part of our assessment package at Pond Cove. They also realized that um, it would be nice to have something a little more kid-friendly for daily use, and that's uh, one of the projects they're going to be working on this summer to have ready to go in August. I'm also pleased to tell you in a general sense that the curriculum work we've been doing for the past few years at Pond Cove, and I'm sure it's the same at the middle school and high school, has meshed extremely well with the process that Sarah Simmons has brought for curriculum alignment. In fact, I think Sarah was a little surprised at some points um, because some of our teams had already linked their curriculum work to, to the learning results. Um, the next step in the process is to connect those, our, our work to the national standards, and Pond Cove is looking forward to that. This is the second year of our computer-based report card. Uh, this year's edition, because we've changed it and revised it, is not only easier to use, but it's, uh, it's more accurate, and it's come to serve as kind of a general summary of the major curriculum topics in each grade level. To give you some idea of the involvement of the Pond Cove staff when they checked back with the everyday math standards, that's Chicago math, they realized there must have been a misprint because the, uh, the expectations for kindergarten were higher than grade one. So we, I think we put Sarah Simmons up to that to actually call the publisher and point this out, and then the Pond Cove people corrected that. Also, um, on the technology front, the mobile lab has worked extremely well. It's out and about in the classrooms a lot, and I think uh, it's symbolically and realistically, it's, more kids are getting on the computer. Fran Vita Taylor's class did an incredible demonstration this morning with iMovies and uh, digitally edited videos that they did, not just the, uh, not just producing them, but put in the titles and the wipes and the sound and all of that. It was very impressive. Continuing with uh, examples from curriculum assessment, I've mentioned a few times this year about the uh, lesson study project that we started. We weren't quite sure what we were doing when we began. This is called the Ready, Fire, Aim approach to innovation. But it's turned out to be a really exciting project. We're going to continue that work. The people who joined that group and invested their time and dared, I should say, had the courage to invite eight people in to observe their teaching uh, and have a critique deserve a lot of credit. I'm really, really proud of the work they did. Another example of teacher leadership that's really blossoming at Pond Cove is a teacher assistance team. That group has been in operation for a while, and we have a nice cycle of getting feedback from the faculty to see what's going well, how we could improve, and we're um, spreading the word about effective strategies for working with individuals and groups. We know that we're far from meeting the needs of all learners. That's one of our goals in future direction planning. But a model like this, I think, is an excellent start. Our climate committee, which has been going on for a few, now, for a few years now, has been very active. And I think we've been energized by the work of the K through 12 climate committee. This will help immeasurably as we talk about um, interpreting some of the goals of the mission and vision and making them relevant to daily life and on a practical level will help with developing the code of conduct. Nancy's mentioned the kind of support we enjoy, the parental support we enjoy here in Cape Elizabeth schools from parents in the community. Once again, it was top notch. The, uh, the volunteers are an integral part of school life at Pond Cove. The PCPA, in addition to providing food, provides programs for visiting artists, recognition for teachers, and they've just done a terrific job. The Playground Committee has been working for years to get something done at Pond Cove, and through their hard work with the school and the town, they've led us through a planning and design project. And if all goes well, I think there'll be a site work started at Pond Cove next week. I'd also like to mention, this is a little unusual, but it happened this year, the work of our long-term subs. We had very unusual circumstances. In grade two, for example, Sarah Saper was hired to be a short-term sub. She turned into a longer and longer-term sub and wound up finishing the year for us. Deb Sampson filled in for a teacher who was out on the medical leave in grade one and then is back in grade three to do that again. We also have Karen Rand, Susan Hobbs, and Mary Jane Hamm in grade three right now. Don't ask me how all this happened, but it's just, uh, I think, a tribute to them and their teams that they could step in at this time of the year and continue the programs. I, I could go on, I'm sure you'd appreciate it if I didn't, but uh, with, with these examples, and I do mean examples of the fine work that's going on at Pond Cove. 
we are probably familiar with the term low-hanging fruit, which means you can easily pluck things because they're there and ready, ready to be harvested. The examples I gave tonight use more of the metaphor of the victory garden, and I see these victory gardens becoming cultivated fields. Thank you. Any questions? Comments? No? All right. That's it. What's that smart? I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just want to say, I, I think that Tom, I want to recognize Tom's analogy of the victory gardens much better than my thing. <laughs> <laughs> Was it seagulls at the dump? <laughs> <laughs> just forget it. <laughs> I jotted it down over here. Okay, so we will move on to committee reports. Um, first, from the Finance Committee, uh, Elaine. Um, yes, uh, the Finance Committee met before our regularly scheduled meeting. Um, we signed our warrants and uh, reviewed the appropriation reports. Um, there was um, an approval of spending um, the rental funds from the usage of our school buildings to be used to hire additional custodial help to get the schools ready for September, and that was approved. And we also went over the salary and benefits proposal for our non-classified employees. Um, that was presented, approved, and um, voted and approved. And I think that's it. Thank you. Um, the policy committee. Jennifer? Uh, policy committee met last Wednesday and we pretty much wrapped things up for the year and discussed various policies we might want to review or new policies, different areas for new policies that we might want to get into next year. Okay. Um, and the facilities committee. Um, we met uh, a couple of weeks ago and Basically, we are still working on the high school, on the floor plan for the high school. Um, and there are still some issues um, that need to be hashed out, which I think we will be coming to conclusion um, at this next meeting, uh, which is this Thursday night at 7 o'clock. Um, we will also have conversation about um, how and how we proceed from here, you know, getting to referendum, getting to the town council, and we have asked the architect to come up with the numbers, the concrete numbers for the high school and for the um, addition at Pine Cove sooner um, than we expected. So we're hoping to have some of that concrete information sometime this summer. So as soon as we have more information, then I can report back to excuse me, everyone on the board. Um, and as far as the planning committee, um, we have a meeting scheduled for 1 o'clock tomorrow. And now George is the new chair of the planning committee, so I don't know what we'll, I, we can discuss that at our organization meeting after this meeting. Um, so that's it for facilities and building. Um, then we can move on to unfinished business. I don't think... We have any? Oh, we do. <laughs> okay. I, I think I need to go back to the finance <laughs> subcommittee okay. report. Okay. There was a detail that I did leave out. I just wanted to make note of it, that uh, we also reviewed and voted and approved uh, the new salary and benefits package for both our superintendent and our business manager. Okay. Very important. Okay. Thank you, Elaine. Um, so we can move on to new business. On um, the first item, um, our new teaching uh, nominations to teaching positions, and before um, I, I read those those recommendations or nominations into the record, um, if you remember, um, a couple of years ago, we we tried to at least um, simplify the format and and be consistent with the format of reporting to you. Um, some information about the candidates, and we came up with a candidate recommendation form. Um, in looking at this and having some conversations, I know with school board members, uh, probably our, our, our next step in this whole process 
um, is to come up with some standardized hiring procedures. Um, you know, just um, at each school, um, when we are involved with hiring, when do we advertise, when do we um, consider a position internal, or do we always advertise? Um, do we, um, who do we include on committees? So I think that's the next logical step that, that we need to go through. And it, it always comes to light when you are involved with that hiring process. And, and I think that's probably something that is, is the next, as you look at all of this information, is probably the next logical step um, that we should take in, as, as far as streamlining that hiring process. That being said, I'd like to um, nominate following individuals. <coughs> And the first is Katie Fagan, um, who will be um, at the high school 0.5 second semester art position filling in um, for a sabbatical leave, which will be taking place then. Uh, the second is Allison Coulter, who will be foreign language full time at the high school. Um, we have a ceramics one fifth, two classes, semester one, Lynn Durye. Um, we have a new instrumental music teacher that is being nominated, Thomas Lazat, at the high school, and an English teacher at the high school, Erica Stump Bergeron. A grade one teacher, one year position at Pond Cove, Linda Sigmund, and a fifth grade teacher, math science at the middle school, Evan Solander, and a fifth grade teacher, language arts, science, Megan Crabtree at the, at the middle school. Okay. So um, we need a motion um, for um, the superintendent's consideration of nominations for those teaching positions. I'd, I'd move that um, we accept the superintendent's nominations to teaching positions as he presented for the 2002-2003 academic year. Okay, a second. Susan? Um, all those in favor? Six. 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 Okay. Um, do we do anything else? No. Okay. Um, so then we can move on to um, a request for two teacher transfers from part-time to full-time. Yes, we have um, two teachers, both at Pond Cove, um, that will be um, the recommendation is to transfer from um, part-time to full-time status. Um, and these are positions, obviously, that have been, been budgeted for. Uh, one is Debbie Butterworth, special education teacher at Pond Cove Elementary. And the other is Holly Hertel, um, uh, who is presently at 0.5 kindergarten at Pond Cove, and the new location will be grade three at Pond Cove. Okay. Um, we need a motion to um, accept these transfers. Susan? I move that we accept the superintendent's request for two teacher transfers from part time to full time for school year 2002 2003. Okay, thank you. Second, Elaine. Um, are there any questions or comments about? No? Um, all in favor? Okay, six. six. Uh, next, I have, um, I would like to recommend the following individuals to athletic fee positions um, for the fall of 2002. Um, Andy Strout. Uh, varsity boys soccer. You're safe for one more year, Andy. Um, ben Raymond, JV boys soccer. Charlie Carroll, varsity girls soccer. Ben Bluen, JV girls soccer. Marianne Doss, girls cross country. Paul Jackson, golf. Nikki Maher, football. Sue Weatherby, field hockey. And Lori Broadhurst, assistant varsity field hockey. Those are returning coaches at the high school. Returning at the middle school, Joe Doan, cross country, Jerry McQuinney, assistant cross country, Susan Ray, tennis, Ben Putnam, tennis assistant. Sarah Jordan, eighth grade girls soccer, Tim Thompson, seventh grade girls soccer, Jeremy LaRose, seventh and eighth grade field hockey, 
Andrew Riddle, eighth grade, boys soccer. Okay. So um, we need a motion to accept these athletic fee positions. Elaine? I move that we accept uh, the nominations for the athletic fee positions as suggested for the fall of 2002. Thank you. Second? Kathy? Um, questions or comments? None? Okay, then um, we take a vote. All in favor? Next thing on our list is the superintendent's nominations for co-curricular fee positions. Um, yes, you have um, in front of you a listing of co-curricular fee positions, team leaders, drama, and drama at the middle school, team leaders um, at the middle school, um, and if you notice at the, at the end of the second page are also um, Terry White and band and Michelle Hansen for choral music. Okay, we need a motion to accept these co curricular fee positions <coughs> for next year. Um, I'd move that we accept the superintendent's nominations to fill the co curricular fee positions for school year 2002 mm -hmm. 2003 as presented. Okay, second. Susan? Um, any questions or comments? Um, then all in favor? Six. Zero. Um, the next one is for the approval of the negotiated food service workers contract. Um, Who negotiated that? Was that Elaine? Yeah. yeah. I guess. No. I did. Who negotiated? Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Jennifer. Oh, Do you want to present it? Oh, yeah. Sure. Um, I move that we approve the negotiated food service workers contract as we discussed in executive session earlier. Okay. Um, we need a second. Elaine? Um, questions or comments? None? Okay, then all in favor? Six, zero. Okay. Um, the next thing on our list is consideration of a proposal to authorize summer hiring um, by the superintendent. So any um, summer, I mean any hiring that hasn't been done at this point, we would be authorizing um, Tom to do it before we reconvene in August. Um, so I think we need a motion for that. George? I move that we authorize the superintendent during the um, summer months to proceed with um, authorization for hiring um, with uh, subsequent approval later by the board um, for this summer period. Okay. Uh, second, Kathy. Um, any questions or comments? None. Okay. All in favor? Six zero. Okay. Um, and the next on our list is the request for an athletic um, field trip for boys varsity soccer. Um, this is an annual event, I think, for the last several years that the, the boys soccer team has been involved with. Um, I know we had some discussion about some trips that took place during the middle of the year. Um, this is something that uh, does take place before the school year begins. Um, also, if you notice, the new form that was created um, by the Athletic Task Force was used to present this. Um, uh, so hopefully it does give us the information we need um, to make a decision. Um, but it's the kind of, um, I think, activity that we might be looking for more with these kinds of trips. It's in, in, inexpensive. It's in New England. Um, boosters are involved. And it happens before the season starts. Okay. Um, do we have a motion to accept this? I think there might just be a comment up front. Is um, I'm I'm assuming Tom, it's the Long Meadow trip. Is that right? It's not no. Long Meadow. There's no place on here that it indicates where it is. Oh, so we're at we're at a so that's a so we need to we need to revise this form, form to include <laughs> where they are going. Right. Yes. <laughs> but, but we did a we did a great job on all. The other, yeah. we, we did a great job on all the other details. We know in the, in the past all we had on here was where they are going. Right. 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 Where is where is it? Oh. 
And if you remember, this is, uh, Andy, there are a group of schools that have been doing this, and they take turns each year hosting, and it's Hanover's turn. Okay. And my, my only comment on the form, I guess, is uh, it would help me if I knew means of transportation. Hanover narrows the possibilities. I mean, if it were Germany or something. But I, it, just, it just helps me to know if it's planes, trains, automobiles, or school bus, or, or private bus, or VNT. Yeah. Yep. So that's another just change in the form. Okay. Put that on that policy committee. Yeah. <laughs> Wait. Yeah, it's yours. <laughs> I got it. Let's go back for a second Actually, reading anyhow. Okay. So now that we know where they're going, um, can we get a motion to accept this? George? Sure. Um, I would move that we accept the proposed um, athletic field trip for the boys' vars varsity soccer to Hanover, New Hampshire in August, the preseason tournament, um, as presented on this form. Okay. A second? Susan, um, any other questions or comments? No? Okay, then all in favor? 6 0. Um, and our last consideration is of a request for a teacher for an unpaid leave for the next school year. This is another one of those issues that, as they come before the board, um, forces us to think about procedures and policies that we do or don't have. Um, with unpaid paid leaves of absences, unlike sabbaticals, um, we don't have any written procedures and policies around this. Um, and I know we've had a few that have come before the, before the board recently um, with this particular request um, based on the merits of what the, the person is, is looking to do. Um, in a lot of ways, I think, has as much merit as some of the others, if not more, that we have already approved. Um, I do think we need to come up with some guidelines as to are we going to limit each year how many of these we are to approve, but um, we just don't have any guidelines to work from. Whether it's a policy or guidelines, um, it could become unwielding if we don't do something about it for next year. Um, but this is something that, that um, in light of what has transpired this year, this would mean two people, um, I think two at Pond Cove on unpaid leaves next year. We're fortunate in that this particular position is one that we are advertising for um, and we have a significant number of qualified applicants, but it, that in another year could not be the case. But in this particular case, we feel we should be able to fill that for a year without much trouble. Um, but I would suggest that we need to, to take a look at either policy or guidelines that has to do more with unpaid leaves and how we deal with those. You know, and, and I think Tom's right that we really need to look at how we view these. Um, you know, as far as sabbaticals, we have real firm guidelines of how we um, approve sabbaticals and what's needed for that. And this is really a similar thing. Um, uh, so anyway, do... We, does someone want to make a motion to accept this? Sure. Um, I move that we um, approve the request from the teacher who is requesting an unpaid leave uh, for travel and exploration uh, for the 2002-2003 school year as uh, supported by the superintendent. Um, a second? Kathy? Um, are there any comments or questions? I, I do have a comment. I, I think that we have to, um, I'm in agreement that we have to be aware of what's happening with these. Um, and I think that in some, at some point, I would you know, really turn to Tom or turn to Nancy or turn to Jeff to say, how is this impacting your staffing, your ability to staff, and so on? I don't think that hard and fast policies are going to really be helpful. I think that in being guided by the principle of um, attracting and um, retaining the very best staff, we need to recognize that there are certain um, things that we can offer as benefits, perhaps, um, uh, in the school system if we're able to do it and there's not detrimental effect that really do enhance our ability to at attract and retain the very best people. So, I, I mean, I, I, this stuff doesn't, it, well, there was a time where this would never pass with the school board, I'll tell you. Um, I know. 
there was a time that those things would never pass because the, because the, the sentiment was such that it was just um, the, the exploration, this kind of thing. And for those who don't know what we're talking about, there's, there's sort of a, a, a cruising, a, a sailing the coast and travel, extensive travel in Europe. And, um, you, you know, you can see the educational value of that. I mean, I can see a, a huge value for somebody to come back with that. But um, the, as I said, there were times when this would not, certainly not have passed. I think it's the times have changed and it's important for us to um, do this within reason and, and ask the, the, um, uh, the managers of each of the building, the principals of each of the building to, to say yes or no and, um, and, and really, really try to manage it from that level. Because we do incur expenses even if it's just mm -hmm. the, the time and the advertising costs in terms of recruiting another candidate. Anyone else? I think you pretty much said it. Okay. Um, where are we going? Oh. Oh, okay. Um, that all in favor? Okay, six zero. So that's approved. Um, one one of the things that I have to say, actually, I guess tonight I w I was so nervous, not about doing this meeting, but coming after George after the past four years, that um, I think, you know, it will be really difficult to follow. George always made this look so easy. Um, and we all became so comfortable with, with everything that, that he was doing up here. And it's not going to be that easy for me. Um, <laughs> but it's time for a change. <laughs> Everybody was a little too comfortable up here. Um, <laughs> but, but one of the things that I wanted to say was I, we never welcomed Kathy um, to the school board, and, oh. and this is her first meeting, and we're certainly very happy to have her here. And we're very happy to have George back um, in his seventh year of being on the school board, which is really quite amazing and very much <laughs> dedicated person a here. Crazy, yeah. <laughs> um, so anyway, I apologize for, for not having said that earlier. And one of the last things on our agenda is every year, as George had instituted several years ago, um, we like each board member to kind of go back and reflect on things um, that uh, happened over the past year. Um, and I think we can do that. Does anyone want to volunteer to go first? I will, because I hate doing this, so okay. I will. <laughs> um, I would just say it's been an interesting year, um, but I'm really pleased with the progress um, that we made this past year toward our goals and our future direction plan. I mean, it's, I don't know if it will get halted, but at least we made some progress this past year. So. Okay. Um, Elaine? Oh. <laughs> you guys are going to kill me because I actually put this into words before I came tonight. So oh. I really want to take some time. <laughs> Not a lot Quite of time. Quite a few words. <laughs> looks, looks like only about six pages. Of time. <laughs> <laughs> it's so the we, only way I can do my public speaking part, we'll, you know. We'll do the <laughs> Um, I just want to say that, you know, this is my second year as a school board member, and I feel that I've, I've really gained a better understanding of, of the town, of the schools, and in its community members. And I look back on the past year, I want to recognize first um, the hard work of the policy committee, because um, I really appreciate their tackling uh, the new athletic policy and the employee records policy, and I, I truly felt it was time for us to take a look at those, and I look forward to seeing their impl implementation. Um, in working with the building committee, um, with Marie, um, I feel that although we've been together in a variety of different forms over many years, um, that things are st starting to come to fruition um, and that progress is being made. Um, I've enjoyed working with the community members, um, the administrators and now the design firm as we get ready to fine tune what our needs are for the next decade. Um, I look forward to the next steps where we'll be educating the taxpayers so that um, informed citizens can make the uh, decision as to what meets the needs for our students and teachers. Um, I've thoroughly enjoyed being an advisor on the Cape Elizabeth Education Foundation. 
um, I have to admit that when the idea was first floated about in various circles, I thought on a much smaller and consequently an ineffective scale. But um, through the input of many community members, I feel that we are about to embark on a very exciting long-term goal that will show this town and others around us that we can make a difference in education beyond the restraints of our current educational and traditional funding. Um, the excitement has started to build as the board has been expanded. Our first grants are about to be announced in September and the endowment portion will be supported by the fundraising campaign this fall. Just as it was really refreshing um, and gratifying to see the parents um, take the initiative for designing and fundraising for our playgrounds, um, the Education Foundation has the opportunity to make a, a long-term influence on the quality of education. Um, I like working with the planning committee and I'm glad to have the opportunity to continue on. Um, they've done great work in looking long-term to the school's goals and although we've been set back in terms of keeping to some of those plans, I think that we um, have a lot of creative ideas that we can still attain a lot of those things. And then finally, I feel I do have to reflect a little bit on this year's budget process. And I wanted to thank Kevin, who's not here, and Jack um, as finance chairs from the school board and town council uh, for working with Mike McGovern and Tom Frisella and Pauline uh, to develop the compromise budget. I realized that everyone had worked very hard looking at their department budgets and listening to the constituents, the teachers, the parents, um, and questioning their own priorities. Although disappointed that our school uh, cannot be mo moving forward as envisioned in our five-year plan and our future direction initiatives, it's my sincere hope that town councilors, school board members, and most importantly, our community members uh, use this coming year to re-examine our priorities and determine just how this town is going to fund these. Um, I hope that education will remain a priority for this town and that we will look for new ways to fund what will be the shortfalls we will see from the state. Um, be it new town revenues, uh, creative restructuring from both the towns and schools, um, even increased taxes, I hope that we as a town will be willing to keep our schools one of the best in the state. Um, in order to continue to accomplish this, I just want to say that I, I am looking forward to an open and honest process between the town council and the school board and hope that we'll continue to build trust and commitment to the one town concept. Um, I'm going to skip down and just say that I want to thank all the administrators and the teachers, the fellow school board members and various committee members uh, and Tom for the hard work they all do. And while I knew it would be a challenging but rewarding year, I can sincerely say it's been a lot of fun. So thank you. Thanks, Lane. Um, George? That's a hard one to follow. Um, I, I, I just have a couple of brief comments. I think that um, it has really been a very tough budget year. Um, it's happened more recently, so the recency effect tends to, tends to have that um, the, the budget struggle sort of overshadow um, all of the great accomplishments that really uh, came before it and, and occurred during. Uh, this school year. Um, I, I think just a couple of things that, that I sort of use as barometers of change and positive change is um, the uh, levels uh, um, at which we, we have been able to do um, recognition of staff and student accomplishments, um, be they academic, um, um, sort of creative endeavors, or athletic performances. Um, it's been great to be a part of a, a board that is, um, a, a, along with the superintendent and the, uh, the leadership team, that is, that is really spending a good bit of time reflecting and recognizing um, the really excellent uh, contributions of students and teachers. Um, the other thing that's really, that's a good barometer for me, and, and um, you know, maybe Nancy and Tom might laugh about this, but, um, it, over the course of the last several years, and particularly this year, the number of staff that we have had come and report to the board and talk about um, their particular uh, trips or their sort of new initiatives or their sabbaticals or their experiences, whatever, um, I think is a true barometer of, of kind of where things are at, and it's a it's a um, it's a, a, a very positive statement about the job that's that's being done. I think um, by the leadership team of the district. 
i like this evening's example of of job sharing and and there's so so many more um i just wanted to take the opportunity to express my appreciation for what clearly is very hard work and dedication and um and uh for the continued high energy that's that's demonstrated and invested um by our staff and and by the uh, leadership team so thank you thank you um susan I like Elaine prepared prepared a few thoughts and then cut them in half. So, um, and I'll probably mostly read this. But I came across a quote today. Um, in 1832, Abraham Lincoln said in a speech, "Upon the subject of education, I can only say that I view it as the most important subject which we, as a people, can engage in." The sentence went on, so it wasn't really grammatically incorrect. Um, here in Cape Elizabeth. <laughs> 170 years later, I still believe the most important subject in which we can engage is education. But it's changed tremendously, and today more responsibilities than ever are falling on our schools. Two years ago, a, a town member gave us, um, the school board, uh, a copy of a final exam given to eighth graders in Salina, Kansas in 1895. The question at the top of the page read, could you have passed eighth grade in, in 1895? And the questions were divided into categories. Grammar included nine rules for the use of capital letters. Arithmetic, a wagon box is two feet deep, 10 feet long, and three feet wide. How many bushes of wheat will it hold? History, give an account of the discovery of America by Columbus. Can you imagine trying to capture history in the eighth grade today? Uh, you know, how, how far it's come since 1895. Orthography, whatever that is. <laughs> Give two uses of silent letters and spelling. Illustrate each. Geography, name all the republics of Europe and give the capitals of each. The only other continent mentioned was North America. So you can imagine kind of the narrow spoke, scope that geography took in those days. In July 1997, the state of Maine published a book outlining the learning results program. The content area, three more, more than Kansas required, included career preparation, health and physical education, visual and performing arts, and you know better than I do the others. Guiding principles of the learning results said that as each student leaves, he, must, or he or she must be a clear, effective communicator, self-directed and lifelong learner, a creative and practical problem solver, responsible and involved citizen, collaborative and quality worker, an integrative and informed thinker. No small challenge. In regards to career, the results state students will be knowledgeable about the world of work, explore career options, and relate personal skills, aptitudes, and abilities for future career decisions. We don't even know what careers are going to be out there in five years. As far as I know, we don't have one single eighth grade final test, but the learning results requirements for fifth through eighth grade English um, by the learning results fall into these categories. Process of reading, literature and culture, language and images, inform informational tests, text, processes of writing and speaking, standard in English conventions, stylistic and rhetorical aspects of writing and speaking, and research-related writing and speaking. That's what our eighth graders are expected to be able to do. Is it any wonder that educating our children has become a greater challenge than ever before? David Silvernail of USM did a study recently in what he calls higher performing value-added schools in Maine. He actually visited these towns and their schools. Among his findings, were that in Maine's value-added schools, everyone in the community was on the same page. Everyone in the district was behind what the schools were doing and could tell him about it, from the waitresses to the, restaur and the restaurants to the clerks behind the counters. All residents could articulate the vision of their schools. Education in this country is undergoing dramatic changes. In every state, bar none, major initiatives are underway to improve student achievement. That holds true for Cape Elizabeth as well. We can no longer sit back and say, well, it worked when we were in school. <coughs> for year 2000, 2002, the first goal of the Cape Elizabeth Town Council was ensure that quality services and programs are maintained with as minimal impact as possible on the property tax rate. Unfortunately, maintaining our school programs is not going to prepare our students for tomorrow. We're already behind where we need to be preparing many of them for today and we're shamefully aware of it. I cannot imagine that maintain is a word found in any educational organization's short, organization short list of goals at the federal, state, or local level because we all know that maintaining is not an option, much less a goal. 
I think we've done an outstanding job of identifying where we need to be going as a school community. This year I felt we lost a lot of time and energy dealing with problems and not enough time finding and implementing solutions. And we need to move on. I hope next year will be a year for change. We cannot become what we need by remaining where we are. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have anything? I am usually. If you don't want to. Okay. Um, then I ha actually, what, what I have done is something a little different. Um, and I, I'm <coughs> focusing on just one aspect of um, something that we talk about every year. And every year since I've been on the board, um, we discuss the outdoor experience for our 6th and 7th graders. And in good years and lean years, Chewankee always seems to be one of the topics throughout our budget season. Through our school budget, we have been able to fund the teacher stipends and transportation. We also fund a nominal amount of $2,500 toward program costs. The balance has been paid for by fundraisers and parent tuition fees. We have all discussed this program in many ways and have never really listened to the students' point of view. I have a few of the essays that the kids wrote when they returned from Chewankee this year. And I'd like to share just a sentence or two from each of seven essays that I have from sixth graders. Keep in mind, these are the real reasons that we keep the outdoor experience as part of our curriculum. And these are the words from the students themselves. Um, first of all, I think that by going to Chewankee, you build character. When I went, I had never been away from home before, but I got through the week and learned a lot about myself and the people in my group. I saw some of my friends in a whole different light. I did things I didn't know I was capable of doing. I also made friends with people I barely even knew. Barely is B-A-R-L-E-Y. Having pouring rain for two days and being away from home really brings people closer together. The next one. Most importantly, Chewankee focuses on teamwork. Without it, you would accomplish nothing at camp. I really enjoyed how no one man could complete the group goals. Everything from school is scratched off your slate and you start brand new. This would be the time to start over and try a better attitude. We are all equal and no one has more say than anyone else. You either all float or you all sink. Most importantly, at Chewankee, you learn many life skills. Like in a work environment, you don't get to choose who you work with. Still, you work as a team and get the job done. You also get an experience away from your family. While at Chewankee, you learn how to cook your own food. When I went to Chewankee, the first two days were really hard for me because I got so homesick. Even when I thought that I might have been able to have a little fun, I couldn't stop crying. At those times, no textbook could help me. Only my friends could, and they did. I'm amazed at what they did to help me take my mind off home, between going on walks with me or just a little hug. Sometimes it helped, other times it didn't. But even when it didn't, they kept trying. I realized that Chewankee really brings kids together. Even if they are the grade bully, they seem to soften up at Chewankee. You learn that it is hard to take on a big task if you don't have a cooperative group that works together as a good team. This past week, I know that I didn't have all of my best friends in my group, but we all showed a lot of effort and we worked great together. Most importantly, I think that Chewankee is about encouragement. We all helped each other out through the week. Going to Chewankee was a brand new experience for me. It gave me a chance to learn outside the box, in quotes. I learned things about people I have never known before. I challenged myself even though it was, it was tough at first.
I got a taste of a different lifestyle, being away from home, sleeping in tents, and cooking over a campfire with people other than my family. I also learned things about myself I would have never known if I had stayed at home. The point I'm trying to make is that none of this would have happened if Chewankee wasn't a part of the sixth grade program. To sum it up, Chewankee is a great program that kids can that kids can be with people they may not know. At the end of five days, you will have probably learned many things about the people in your group. The group challenges teach you how to work together as a team and work as one. In conclusion, Chewankee should still be included in the school program because it teaches you life skills. Such skills cannot be learned in textbooks. So, you know, these are all the things that we talk about as adults, but it certainly makes an impact hearing it directly from the kids. Um, and now, I think we have, oh, we have one meeting left before we adjourn for the summer, and that will be our school board workshop uh, next week, June 18th, um, at 7 p.m. That's next Tuesday. Um, and then we will adjourn for the summer and be back in August. We have a joint workshop with the school board and the administrators on August 21st. August 21st. Rick? Yes, sir. August 21st. Um, and then we will start with our regular scheduled meeting in August, our regular school board meeting. Um, so with that, I think we can adjourn this meeting and then we will go back to our organizational meeting, which we had started um, before this meeting. We have a motion to adjourn. Elaine? Yep, I'll make a motion that we adjourn the Stephen Center. Just, just to enter. It's still public session. <laughs> public okay. session. Okay.